This is like the ultimate, it's different when Democrats do it. Top Republicans are attacking Hakeem Jeffries as an election denier. Yeah, that's because that's, that's what he is. He's got a long track record of it. Here's why that label is misleading. Oh man, you really know you're in for some Orwellian propaganda now because it's not at all misleading. Jeffries, as you know, if you watched my video yesterday, has a long history of election denial, uh, at least in regards to the 2016 election. Democrats in general, if you watch this channel, you know have a history going back to at least the year 2000 of election denial and violence in response. So I'm gonna read this article I'm going to tear it apart because it's just so absurd. The writer of this piece, Jasmine Aguilera, is an interesting character. Time put out this little video of her uh, just talking about herself, I guess. And it will tell you, I think, give you some insight into what we're dealing with here. Uh, again, this is the author of the article I'm about to read you. I heard the term internalized racism for the first time during a Chicano studies class in college. I hadn't realized until then that I thought of myself as inferior because of my Mexican-American upbringing, that I felt English was superior to Spanish, and that I believed the closer I could align myself to white America, the better. I did all of this subconsciously and have worked to move past my inferiority complex and inter <laughs> So she's got a lot of mental issues that she now blames on white people. She originally you know, wasn't a hate monger that hated white people, but then she went to college and she got in this Chicano group and they taught her about how like all of her problems are actually because of a white conspiracy. So yeah, that's who we're dealing with here. In recent days, some top Republicans have called Rep. Hakeem Jeffries an election denier, starting a line of attack against the New York Democrat after he was chosen to lead the party as House Minority Leader. Attack. I just find that so interesting because, you know, that's all we've heard for the last few years is how Republicans are inhuman, dangerous threats to democracy because some of them deny their election results from 2020, which people like me have pointed out is very odd considering we just went through four years of election denial. And before that, Democrats denied the 2000 election. And then they got violent at Trump's or at Bush's inauguration. And then, yes, at after Trump was elected, they claimed that election was stolen, and then there was violence. There was a pretty massive riot at the Capitol uh, during Trump's inauguration. Now, they didn't make it into the center of the Capitol because security had it all blocked off. Hmm, strange that they didn't do that for January the 1st. So continuing on here, the newly elected incoming leader of the House Democrats is a past election denier who basically said the 2016 election was, quote, illegitimate. He didn't basically said that. He did say it and suggested that we had, quote, fake president. Okay, this is all true. Hakeem Jeffries said all these things. Um, and if I'm not going to go back through them now. I did a video yesterday. If you want to check that out, you can go watch it after this. And it has all of his trail of election denial, which we're about to hear why it's completely different when they do it. The Republican National Committee Twitter account also posted a tweet on Wednesday referring to Jeffries as an election denier. So, oh, no, he's an election denier. McConnell and the RNC are referring to comments Jeffries made in the wake of the 2016 election of President Donald Trump. In tweets, news interviews, and House hearings, Jeffries called to question the legitimacy of Trump's election because of Russia's attempts to interfere in the 2016 election race. So here we go. It's different when Democrats deny election results because Russia interfered. Now, to what extent did they interfere? How many votes did they change? Who knows? This isn't even a question that ever gets asked. It's like the obvious question. If you're an actual journalist, someone tells you that, you say, hmm, really? So how many votes did they change? Uh... You know, they have no answer for that. The only good it's it, that, it, that any of this is for is as a tool for Democrats and their media to use as a weapon against the Republicans That's, and to delegitimize Trump, to undo the election results and accuse Trump of colluding with Russia to win the election. And then they note here, surprisingly, that there was a special counsel investigation and concluded that they did not have evidence that Trump or his campaign conspired with Russia. So no evidence that Trump conspired with Russia. And no evidence that any, you know, $100,000 that Russia spent on ads for Facebook and Pokemon Go had any effect whatsoever. We No evidence at all. The term election denier has taken on a particular meaning, however, after Trump's failed re-election campaign. Oh, so she's just telling us that they've redefined it. Yeah, sorry. You can't call Democrats that anymore because we've now decided that it's taken on a new meaning. We've redefined it now to mean Republicans who deny election results. That's it. So just like you can't be racist to white people, Democrats can't be election deniers. 
The phrase has come to be associated with Republicans who claim the 2020 election was stolen from Trump, assert without evidence that there was fraud in the 2020 voting, and cast doubt on secure voting systems. Uh, claims that led to the deadly January 6, 2021, which is just an absurd thing to say. I mean, if that were true, then we could take, if something happens to a Republican or anything happens, we could just blame this author and say, well, it was all of your claims that Republicans were election deniers and dangerous threat to democracy. You said that, and then people went out and they acted on it. Oh, she would say, no, 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 you can't do that because, it, you know, it's not my fault that people acted. I, I didn't tell them to go out and do violence. Exactly. Just like after the GOP baseball game shooting, Bernie Sanders was asked if he had any culpability in that. He said he scoffed at it. No, I, he, he said, if I have to be responsible for everything done by people who support me, I'm going to be apologizing quite a lot and taking a lot of responsibility, which is true. And Jake Tapper accepted that. Everybody accepted that. Didn't blame him, which they shouldn't have. Um, but this is just it, it's a Democrat state propaganda scrambling, just scrambling to try and justify, rationalize something in her head to convince uh, the reader or herself, I don't know who, that it's completely different when Democrats deny election results. And the fact that Trump asserted without evidence that there was fraud in the 2020 voting and cast doubt on secure voting systems, thats he's well within his right to do that. That's freedom of speech. And Democrats, going back to 2018 or 2019, there's a video out there showing Democrats just asking all kinds of questions, raising all kinds of questions and doubt about voting machines. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. For researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. These voting machines can be hacked quite easily. You could easily hack into them. It makes it seem like all these states are doing different things, but in fact, three companies are controlling this. It is the individual voting machines that some pose that pose some of the greatest risk. There are a lot of states that are dealing with antiquated machines, right, which are vulnerable to being hacked. I'm sure that there's some reason why that was different when they did it. Calling Jeffries an election denier is misleading and conflates different issues, but they're not different issues at all. Casting unfounded doubt on the outcome of an election is irresponsible either part when either party does it, okay? Which is, I guess, true. At least uh, you're attempting, or it seems like she's attempting to hold uh, uh, consistent standards here, but let's keep reading. But I think it's important to remember that the culture around election was quite different before 2020. You see how the word different just keeps popping up? And of course, they don't explain how or why it's different. They just state that it is. Just like she stated that election denier has taken on a new meaning uh, just the myopic perspective of these people I, I don't know if it's if it's real if they're really just and i be would believe it with this writer based on the video that we saw of her or are they just like purposely being dishonest they know they're lying they know that they're just spinning prior to the 2020 election many democrats point to evidence of russian interference in the 2016 election what evidence there was no evidence i mean again what interference was there? There was some ads on Facebook and Pokemon Go. And to what effect did they have? Who knows? They don't know. The fact that Trump won the Electoral College but did not win the popular vote, again, this happens. This is part of our system. We don't choose presidents based on the popular vote. And use talking points calling Trump not my president. But the actions taken by Trump and his supporters leading up to the 2020 election and after were unprecedented. They weren't. I talked about it before, done many videos. Democrats rioted at Bush's inauguration in 2000. Uh, they riot and even attacked his motorcade, and they rioted at Trump's inauguration in 2016. Uh, the only difference there was that they had blocked off the center of the Capitol so they couldn't get in. Otherwise, there were black clad communists with flags attacking everything in their sight, setting cars on fire, beating people up, injuring police. Uh, but that news was left to fall down the memory hole, never to be spoken of again. Specifically, so they can write pieces like this that just completely redefine words and rewrite history. Trump stoked false conspiracy theories of voter frauds, filed more than 60 election-related lawsuits, and pressured officials to interfere in election results. So they're saying this is unprecedented, but it's not. Filing the lawsuits is not illegal. You can say that they were false conspiracies of voter fraud, but again, Democrats claim this voter fraud literally every election that they lose. Recent polls have shown that more than half of Republicans believe the 2020 election was stolen. Big deal. In 2000, uh, more than half, I think around 75% of Democrats believe that Trump did not legitimately win the election. And uh, I think around 65% of Democrats believe that Trump 
uh, was not a legitimate president as well and was not legitimately elected. So again, these, these things are not unprecedented. They're desperately trying here to redefine election denier and just convince the reader that it's totally different when we do it because somehow we're when we deny election results, we're justified. And you might have seen that in The View when they were trying to uh, defend Hillary from claiming the election was illegitimate, saying that, oh, well, it was, and Bush was illegitimate. See, so they just convinced themselves that it's just true when they do it. The article ends with this. In this day and age, I hate that saying, it's incredibly easy for the public servants to post something online and a couple years down the road have to come back to pick it up in public discourse, okay? But I think that as nature of threats to democracy shift, we all need to be vigilant and make sure that we are placing democracy first and politics second. I don't even know what that means. Making sure that we're placing democracy first and politics second. You know, this is just that rationalization I was talking about. They can tell themselves that what they're doing here is just placing democracy first. Yes, they're clearly lying. Yes, they're clearly spinning to cover for Jeffries because they can't. They just simply cannot hold him to that same standard. If they did, he might not have gotten that position. The first black minority leader, by holding him to that standard, by calling him a horrible uh, democracy, danger to democracy, he wouldn't probably not have gotten that position. So they can't do that. And so instead we get these Orwellian kind of redefining of words and rewriting of history and the soaring, like kind of gobbledygook language where they just talk about democracy and politics second. This is not politics second. Republicans bad, Democrats good. Defending Democrats. I mean, where do you see the media ever go work this hard to defend a Republican from attacks from Democrats or from the media. Never. It does not happen. It does not happen. So <laughs> just a an embolism-inducing Orwellian nightmarish article from Jasmine Aguilera here. I think that's about all I have for that one. So I appreciate you all watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and leave a comment to continue the discourse. Thanks a lot.